And appreciate it. Cheryl? Or, you know, well, David, right. rising commodity prices might be enough to ruin your breakfast. The dry weather that is gripping California and Latin America isn't just taking a heavy toll on those regions. It's impacting food prices nationwide and forcing you to pay more money for your meals. I have examples. Your morning brew, your coffee costs a bit more these days. Coffee prices are up 58% uh, since January 1st. There's coffee up 58%. Pork prices, take a look at this, up, up 45% as you can see. Uh, wheat is now costing consumers 17% more as you can see right here on your screen. Corn prices up 15%. And a cup of OJ. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Take a look at this. Up nearly 10 percent. Wow. You know, I Crazy, knew these right? numbers just to see them in that graphic. It's shocking. Now, we have somebody who says it's not all bad news because he has ways you can profit off of the rising cost of commodities. Joining us now is Jeff Reeves, InvestorPlace.com editor. Jeff, great to see you again. Now, we have seen this inflation for a while. I know the Federal Reserve doesn't admit that the inflation exists, but anybody who goes out and shops knows that it does exist. Of course, they take out food prices and energy prices. How much of this is weather related and how much of this will go beyond the springtime, beyond just weather related events? Well, I think a lot of it is weather related. I mean, it's undeniable that there is inflation that's out there for food prices, energy prices. But let's not uh, forget that a lot of these commodity prices, if they're dollar denominated in a weak dollar environment, uh, they tend to go up more in a strong dollar environment. They tend to go down. So if we do see tightening of Fed policy, uh, we pull off the gas on quantitative easing. If there is going to be a rate hike next year, I think it is going to put a lid on some commodity inflation. But the bottom line is that some of the big droughts that we've seen around the world right now and, and also the very cold weather. And also, let's not forget that there's all that unrest in Russia. Russia's a big wheat producer. Um, mm -hmm. There's just a lot of events that are going on right now that are hurting kind of the agricultural com commodities market. Well, also, Jeff, I mean, the severe drought conditions that we've seen in particular in the South, not as bad uh, this year as in years past, and then in the Midwest as well. And that's something that, unfortunately, traders have had to deal with nonstop. And the, and the drought, unfortunately, is going to continue to impact uh, wheat and corn as well, correct? Yeah, and you know, I, I I'm kind of circumspect, circumspect about some of this stuff. I'm I'm an investor. I want to make money off of this. So while I do, of course, sympathize with the fact that prices are going up and some grocery prices are higher. I'm interested in how, how to play that. So a great example is if you, if if you've seen a lot of the drought that's happened in Latin America and in California, you want to play that. There are companies out there that that make drought resistant crop seeds, whether it's a Syngenta and Monsanto or some of the popular ones. Actually, the chemicals company Dupont uh, is in the process of getting bioengineered corn approved in Europe that's drought resistant. So you know. I, Again, I don't want to act unsympathetic to this, but if you if you look kind of between the lines, there are ways to kind of play these these trends of, of higher food prices and demand for this stuff. Jeff, what about coffee? I used to cover Latin America, so I'm familiar with the coffee trade quite a bit. That goes way up and it goes way down. Is there a danger of, of trying to catch it after it's already gone way up and perhaps it's ready to come down again? Yeah, and actually, it's already started to come down. If you look at uh, coffee prices are up 58% year to date ish uh, today. I haven't looked at the exact numbers, but they were up a little bit more than 70%. And, you know, it's all this drought uh, forecasting that's been going on in Latin America. There's a big forecast for rain, and coffee saw one of its biggest one day drops in years uh, just in the last couple of trading sessions here. So it's important to rem remember that all commodities are volatile, whether you're talking about gold or oil, the same kind of volatility applies to agricultural commodities. Uh, and I think, especially for coffee, uh, for coffee I think we've seen uh, the top there. There's there is a lot of froth, so tread lightly. Um, but again, I do think in a diversified portfolio, particularly if you're an investor, David, who's concerned about inflation long term, right. you can play a fund, uh, you know, to, to get exposure to these agricultural commodities and kind of hedge your bets against inflation. OK, Jeff, if we're going to talk about making money on commodity price, let's talk about livestock, because livestock itself and COW is the ticker. That is actually a higher year to date uh, by 12 and a half percent. You know, a part of this certainly is, is you know, the grain that the cows uh, will eat. But. Uh, this seems to be a lot of momentum right now. Yeah, and actually that's an interesting fund. I mean, the ticker symbol is cow. It's about two-thirds in cows, uh, but it also trades into uh, lean hog futures. Uh, and there's actually been a, a bunch of diseases going around the the pig crops, if they're called crops, whatever they are, livestock, pigs. Uh, the virus is supposed to cut as many as two to three million head of hog from Smithfield, one of the largest pork producers in the world. Mm -hmm. The disease is supposed to affect about 10 percent of pigs. Pig um, so it's, it's one of these things where it's, so it's the just the meaning of two expensive. trends. So the hogs and, and eventually the beef are going to be more expensive, correct? 
Yeah, and particularly, again, if you want to play uh, food price inflation, you know, the cow is a good way to do that. Or again, if we're talking about agricultural commodities like grain, your, your corn, your wheat, uh, there's a, a power shares fund. The DBA is a ticker symbol. It's this basket of uh, kind of grains out there like soy, corn, and wheat. Um, again, I, I certainly don't advise people go 50% of your portfolio in these things. They're very volatile. But again, mm -hmm. it's a hedge against inflation to play these trends. I think there's ways to responsibly put them in your portfolio. But it impacts everything, Jeffries. I think that's why and this we is have so seen fascinating. Ag going up, and yeah. it ain't gonna, it ain't really gonna go does. down. I mean, even even yeah. when the weather improves, uh, generally speaking, as long as Janet Yellen yeah. is printing money, we got problems there. Jeff Reeves, thank you very much. Yeah. Appreciate Great it. To be here. Well, Thanks. if you've been